So today, I'm going to review iOBD2, which is one of my favorite OBD2 readers for your car. I'm also going to show you how to connect to the car. This is my ELM327, which I got off Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's pretty cheap, not a big deal to buy one of these things, much cheaper than buying a code reader or going to the dealership and paying them to read your codes. And this goes into the OBD2 port in your car. Um, so you need to find it underneath the dashboard. It's different in every single car. Mine's kind of over to the left. And then there's a little thing covering it. So that goes in the port there. And your car has to be on. Mine has little lights that tells me when it's connecting. Uh, sorry for the bad audio, by the way. I forgot my lapel mic at someone's house, so this is as best as it's gonna get. So this is iOBD2, all right? It's actually a really fantastic app. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it is free, which is pretty awesome. I think there's a paid version, but as far as I can tell, this has most of the main functions that you're going to need. So I'm gonna do a walkthrough of what I've discovered using it and how good I think it is. The only problem for me is that it takes a long time to connect. So. What you do is you go to your settings, go to your Wi-Fi. This is an iPhone, so I have to use Wi-Fi. Okay, and there it is there. Y OBD2. Well, sorry, Wi-Fi OBD2. No, not net gear. You click on the little I, go to static, and you set a static IP address, okay? You can just connect with the DHCP but the problem is is that it's going to your phone is going to think that is the internet so if you set a static ip address it can connect to this externally and you can still have lte or whatever 3g whatever it is your normal internet comes from okay so this is what i have put in for my ip address these are similar across most of these devices 1.192.168.0.123 1 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 Okay, and that is all the information you need. So I've connected to that. So when you actually do log in the first time, this is what it looks like. You can look for your brand and they've got cool little logos there for each of the different uh, car brands. So it's a BMW, it is a 2003 02 2.5 liter, it's my little engine. Save. ELM327, okay, so you pick your OBD2 dongle that you have. And now we wait for it to try and connect. Oh, see, look, see up there, it says Bluetooth. You want it to try and connect to Wi-Fi. So you go to connection, select Wi-Fi, and now it is able to try and connect. There, see the Wi-Fi symbol up at the top? I got it to work. Okay, connection successful, as you can see. Let's go to the dashboard. So the main page reads up voltage, mass, airflow, instant fuel consumption, and ignition timing. This instant fuel consumption is awesome, I love that. My car doesn't even have that. Look how fast that responds. That's in liters per hour. That's absolutely fantastic, it's, it's immediate, right? Um, the RPMs are a little jumpy, but they're very, very quick to respond. I think it's absolutely fantastically designed. There's my coolant temperature, everything's on the main page. Now it has just cool basic modes. This is idle mode, so if you're just sitting at idle. In sport mode, I have my instant fuel consumption now in liters per hundred kilometer. Uh, up in Canada, that's what I use here. You guys use miles per gallon in the States. But it is extremely quick in the same, in the same fashion as the first page, right? So take a look there at the liters per hundred kilometers. This road's a bit bumpy, sorry for that. It's driveway anyway. It responds so quickly. I don't have liters, instant liters per hundred kilometers in this car. All I have is average. So that's a fantastic feature if you don't have that in your car. Because my car can read it, it just doesn't display it. Thanks BMW. But, so there it is. And look how quickly it goes. Look at that. And the RPMs are bang on right too. I'm sitting at just two, it says just two. Perfect. That's a bumpy road, isn't it? Stop sign. All 
All right, so this is the sport mode. So if you're looking for sporty driving, so it's got the front mounted tack, which is great, but I don't think that I would actually use this as my main tachometer if I was driving on the track or something. But once, this seems to be working quite well now. It hasn't quit or hasn't failed yet since I've reinstalled it. it this looks good enough and it responds fast enough that I would use this on the track, especially for the coolant temperature. That's super important so you can see um, you know, just where your engine's at, especially with a BMW that has potential to overheat really quickly, being able to constantly monitor that is really good. All right, cruise mode is cool too. Gives you your speed as the main front mount and your continuous running mileage and your travel time. So as soon as you start the app and it connects, that's when it starts on the travel time, which is really cool. It gives you your average speed too, right? So I like those three modes. And then obviously there's a custom mode. It wouldn't be complete without a custom mode where you can pick your all of your own PIDs. Right? And there are a lot to choose from, depending on what it can read from your car. So the way these things work is they send a request. The, the app sends a request to the ECU of the car, and then it attempts to pull the information from the sensor. If it can pull the information from the sensor, then it returns it back to the application and it displays it for you. Okay, so it essentially sends a request to the ECU to see if the ECU complies, and then it can tell you what your, let's say, calculated load is or fuel trim, right? So there is my, Short-term fuel trim, ST, short-term, right? So that's telling me how the car is metering the fuel mixture and trimming the uh, length of time that the fuel injectors are open for on each stroke, okay? So ignition timing, air intake temp, mass airflow, throttle position, command second air, and all my O2 sensor. So on the main page, we also have graphing, which is really cool. Okay, so there's a bunch of different things on this page that can be displayed in a graph format. So once you put in your total weight of the car, it's going to give me a, almost like a dyno graph, right? Of torque and power, which is kind of cool. Not entirely accurate. I wouldn't trust this to give you some real numbers for your car, but you know, it's kind of cool to see and to have. spike you see. All right? No, I did not break the speed limit. And then it goes back down. That's pretty awesome. I think that's cool. I just sit there and watch that all day. Oh. Okay. Under performance, this is a very cool section too. So uh, Dash Command has a zero to 60 calculator and it also has a quarter mile calculator. This one, you can set a start speed and end speed. So that means if you wanted to measure your 80 to 120 time or any of those other time chunks, you can input the start speed and the end speed and it will get, time it, start the time right when you hit that speed and then it will cut it off right when you hit your goal. So you can get a really good uh, view if you were doing some you know power tuning and you really wanted to see what your high-end horsepower is changing at that's a real-world example you can look at those numbers and compare them it also has a 400 meter acceleration test too 0 to 400 and obviously under any of these any good one is going to have the diagnostic section which is the main reason why you would be choosing this or choosing any of these so you can read trouble codes, readiness tests, and uh, just basic vehicle information. Now, the other thing that's really important here is live data. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's take a look at our O2 sensor. Okay, I, s I can select more than one at a time. Click data stream item to check the graph. Okay, so now this is going to show me exactly what that O2 sensor is reading. And if you've done your reading on O2 sensors, you should see a series of spikes, okay? Just like that. That means that it's functioning properly, All right? So this is actually a fantastic app for real engine diagnosis, as well as performance.
okay? So again, trouble codes, obviously you need to be able to read those. God, my clutch is heavy, put off. No trouble codes, no pending codes. And there it is, okay? So this is, uh, this is actually my favorite OBD2 reading app so far that I've tested. It's simple, the interface is good, everything that you need is there, none of the extra stuff, and it doesn't give you too much information at once. You can choose the different parts that you want to display, as well as seeing incredibly detailed stuff like graphs, okay? So, so far, iOBD2 by Xtool, I give two thumbs up. This is an awesome app.